Headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Israelis and Palestinians have agreed to an indefinite ceasefire ending Israel's 50-day assault on the Gaza Strip. Palestinian health officials say 2,139 people, most of them civilians, including more than 490 children, were killed in the Israeli offensive. Israel's death toll stood at 64 soldiers and six civilians. The ceasefire deal was mediated by Egyptian officials in Cairo and took effect Tuesday evening. It calls for an immediate cessation of hostilities, an opening of Gaza's blockaded crossings with Israel and Egypt, and a widening of the territory's fishing zone in the Mediterranean. This is Israeli spokesperson Mark Regev. Israel has accepted the Egyptian ceasefire proposal. We hope that this time the ceasefire will stick. And I think now, as the dust will begin to clear, many people will be asking, why is it that today Hamas accepted the very same Egyptian framework that it rejected a month ago? Ultimately, so much bloodshed could have been avoided. Meanwhile, Hamas spokesperson Sami Abu Zuri said the people of Gaza have triumphed over Israeli oppression. Today, this week, blockaded people has won over the destructive Israeli power. It has done the impossible. It has done what the Arab armies have failed to do, combined. Today, the women, children and elderly of Gaza in their resilience and resistance through their mighty and legendary unity have succeeded in recording this victory. Several thornier issues remained unaddressed by the ceasefire and are expected to be raised during further talks next month. Hamas has demanded Israel release a number of its prisoners. The group has also asked for an airport and seaport in Gaza. Meanwhile, Israel's called for the disarmament of Palestinian militant groups and the return of the remains of two of its soldiers killed in the fighting. Well, for more, we go directly to Gaza City, where we're joined by the award-winning Palestinian journalist Mohammed Omer. He tweets at the handle Mo Gaza. Mohammed Omer, welcome back to Democracy. Now, can you talk about the significance of this ceasefire and um, Israel saying, uh, the spokesperson Mark Regev, that um, that so many people didn't have to die uh, if Hamas had simply accepted this same, essentially same agreement over a month ago? Thank you very much, Amy. Uh, I guess Mark Rayev, this is his job, really. This is his job to say these statements uh, over and over, and uh, he wants to, the international community to believe these statements. In any case, the fighting is, is on hold at this moment. People are trying to get back to their homes in the east of Gaza City and the southern part of the Gaza Strip. The different parts of the Gaza Strip are now trying to come back slightly to life. Uh, people have started to have a confidence after President Mahmoud Abbas appeared on TV yesterday announcing this is a serious ceasefire and it's going to be lasting for long. Uh, there is a lot of wind, uh, a lot of winds here that's happening in the Gaza Strip, uh, damages and destruction, and uh, we're talking about thousands of homes that have been demolished between completely and partially. Uh, we're talking about massive number of people who are uh, killed and injured, uh, just about 1,800 children who became orphans in the Gaza Strip as a result of targeting uh, at least 100 45 families uh, in the Gaza Strip over the past seven weeks. Uh, the, the, the massive destruction, you, you won't believe, just behind me, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, Al-Basha Tower, which is a residential um, area, um, um, apartment, uh, which was completely destroyed by the Israeli um, F-16s, uh, a number of these apartment buildings have been completely destroyed. The damage is beyond imagination uh, in Gaza. Uh, I believe Gaza will need several years to, uh, to, uh, to, to fix or reconstruct uh, the damages that are caused by the Israeli uh, military. We are also uh, talking to different people in Gaza and we are seeing that they're trying to come back to their life, they're trying to rebuild their life. Uh, the resilience is still very high among the population in Gaza. Uh, we have seen also people in the northern part of the Gaza Strip who are facing the Israeli watching towers uh, are just uh, coming back to their homes to find massive destruction uh, after several weeks of of, uh, fighting. Gaza is still in very much bad need for a, um, a humanitarian aid, uh, which the population is hope that it's going to
going to be coming anytime soon in the coming days. We're talking also to some other uh, health officials who uh, inform us that uh, among the 11,000 people who were um, injured, there are about 3,000 children and just one third of them will become paralyzed for the rest of their life. What about the agreement? What exactly does this ceasefire say? The ceasefire is a quite vague terminology. I have seen the document which the Egyptians have released. Uh, uh, the, the term ease the, uh, the crossings or ease the blockade is rather vague and uh, it's rather um, a subjective term which I find very difficult to translate in the ground. If you go back a little bit, Amy, uh, to May 2010, just after the Mavi Marmara, the Turkish attack uh, or the, the attack on the Turkish flotilla, we, we do see uh, uh, how much uh, uh, Israel tried to get uh, materials into the Gaza Strip and, and easing the blockade back then was uh, translated into allowing ketchup, uh, shoelies uh, and uh, even coriander to make falafel for the people of Gaza. I hope this is not going to be the case this time. Uh, people are hopeful that this is going to be uh, holding, uh, but I am not uh, quite confident that Israel is really willing to do that. If that's the case, then we would be seeing all the commercial crossings and Rafah crossing will be open but that has not been the case uh, today. Palestinian fishermen are hoping to uh, get inside um, further than the, uh, the three miles that they have been restricted to by the Israeli military for the past period. But so far, uh, we haven't uh, heard any reports from the fishermen whether they were able to get inside uh, uh, further than six miles. So it's all in, in, in the test mode, if you like, in the coming hours. We're trying to see how much of this is going to hold. Um, but but the fact that is really um, quite holding now that the ceasefire is still going uh, on and there, are no, there is no fighting, which is a good chance for people to come back to their homes and to check on their relatives and to bury their loved ones and to go condolences. Uh, I have seen, about, talking about condolences, there are, there are hundreds of people who are running to morning tents from one to the other. And there are many people who don't know who was lost. Some people who are living in the same neighborhood who say, well, we don't know that our neighbors have been killed because we were under constant bombardment and attacks that we could not leave uh, outside of the our homes.